Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And it's so wonderful to see all the uh, good folks, good brethren at Heritage Christian. It's almost like uh, uh, Heritage is my home. I work from home. I was here uh, for two years, in 2005 and 2006. Uh, Brethren Paul Spindle and Irvin and Brother Gillums, uh, they brought me over here to go to school and I had my Bachelor of Arts and I had my Master of Arts in New Testament and completed it. They, they brought me here so that I would go back home and work uh, in our homeland, uh, which is the uh, uh, harvest, uh, our ripest fields in India. We have several people to be saved. So I'm so thankful that uh, our Almighty God brought me over here. It's certainly a blessing to be at Heritage. And I'm thankful to <coughs> the President, Dennis Jones, who has given us a good concession in the fees <laughs> so that I will go to school here. And uh, also I thank Brother Brad McKinnon for con contacting me to have this opportunity to speak to you, say something about what's going on in India. Also thank Charlotte and I was the registrar of the university and also thank Brother uh, Travis for making these arrangements. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate all of you who's going to school at Heritage. You are in the right place. Why I tell that is this campus filled with people that's that are striving to produce more effective evangelists for the Lord. And if you're looking at the point of producing more evangelists, you're looking at the people who has a vision. Their vision is the real world ministry. Not that I learned something only here, but being here, I learned so much so that I can do so much than I taught in my homeland to save those people in India. You probably see this uh, presentation here in the first slide. It's talked about the evangelizing India. And in the, out of the, when you look at the population of India, there are 1.2 billion people living in that country. And they speak 18 different official languages and over more than 5,000 different dialects all across the world, all across India. And the state I'm from, you see that was in the dark, that's Andhra Pradesh. We have a population of over eight zero, eighty million people living there who speak one language, about twenty different dialects. So I was really acute to go back and work for our own countrymen because I wanted my people to be saved like me and I wanted my people to people to go to heaven like I want to. If you would please turn with, uh, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28 which was read a, while, a little while ago. It says, Jesus Christ commanded, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you People say that it's a great commandment or a great commission. Sure it is. But when you apply that or when you put that into practice, I would like to tell you, share it with you all my experience uh, on what I learned from this. When I was going to school here, I learned so much from the brethren here and one of them is one lesson I still remember. I heard that lesson five years ago. That was my brother Wayne Bailey. He said, we have a vision. And in order to reach that vision, we must have a mission. And our mission is saving souls. And, the, and our vision is saving souls and the mission is to go out and preach. So when we look at this verse, Matthew 28, verse 18 and following, there is a vision. The vision can be defined as vision is an object of sight. That means you can see it. Maybe, maybe it's your future. 
But the vision is at this particular verse talking about saving the souls of the world, saving the people. That's the vision. And how that vision can be reached is through the mission that is going out and preaching. So there it clearly tells that verse that we have to have a vision and to reach the vision we have to have a mission. So I'd like to bring one example to you. Uh, Paul in his epistles, one of the epistles to Romans chapter 10, he's talking about uh, his own countrymen, how much he loves them, how much he cared for them. He says, brethren, my heart desires and prayer to God for them, that means his own Israel, is for their salvation. So he has a vision to see it, to have his people, his own, his own people saved. So what is he trying to do? Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22, he's talking something very interesting. Chapter 9, verse 22. <coughs> Here is saying, To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I may by all means save some. So he has a vision. To in order to reach that vision, he is doing all he can to accomplish that. So what I'm trying to say is, I'm encouraging you to have a vision. Have a vision. Set a vision for you. What would you like to accomplish? Some people, you probably heard people talking about <coughs> setting a goal. But I'm talking about a vision where you can see from here and approach to it. And in order to set a vision, you have to think and you have to learn from your experiences. And look at the great examples we have in the Bible. Set a vision. And to, in order to reach that reach the vision, you have to mission. And for, to accomplish that vision, you have to use your resources. You can learn to be an evangelist while you are at heritage. You can learn to be a missionary. You can learn to be an elder. Or you can learn to be a teacher, or a professor, or a director of a preacher training school. You can, I mean, you can use these resources what we have here, and a, a pursue to in order to pursue the vision, you have to work, and it could be done in one way or the other. But use all the resources. You are the best place. When I looked at the library five years ago. I never seen a Christian library in my life at all in this kind of library. Not that this is the only biggest. But I have a vision. I'd like to have one similar to this. And the Lord is helping me to fulfill that. So you have to set a vision for yourself and use the resources. Here, through the lectureships, library, gospel campaigns, seminars, and through staff and faculty, you can gather all what you need to make yourself as an effective evangelist for this world. So make use of the resources that are available here, which are free. I remember Travis a uh, long time ago. I, re I remember him almost at least once in a month. You know, whenever he makes his announcements, he used to say, Hey guys, we're going to have a devotion at so-and-so place. The good news is, we're going to have a full free. Raise your hands. And I used to raise hands like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it is free, you would like to take the opportunity to use that. So whatever the resources that are available here, they are free. So use them to make yourself, to have a vision, set a goal, to pursue them. You have to work hard. And uh, uh, I to tell you some example like I had a when I was here I was going to school I had an accident I mean it's not really a, an accident it means going driving a car and hitting somebody I was riding a bicycle and I fell off and broke my back I had a fusion surgery I was in the hospital hospital 
I wasn't in the rehab, but I was in the rehab at Heritage. <laughs> but that was a, a wonderful experience for me. But anyway, besides all that, I missed one thing. I missed going to a campaign week sometime. But anyway, they considered my situation and gave me the grade. That's wonderful. But Phyllis Underwood, she was the head of the computer department at that time. They were all going on a mission trip to Christmas Island. So I was talking to her and said, well, I wish I would come with you all. She said, why don't you try and then? I asked her, how? She said, go and ask the elders. See, I went to the elders and asked them, said I would like to go. They didn't ask me, do you have money? They didn't ask me, do you have uh, ability to do that? They asked me only one thing, are you sure? I said, yes, sir. And the next week they said, you're going. I've been to three different countries while I'm here. I went to Samoa. I went to Western Samoa. I went to Christmas Island. I also went to Missouri. I went to California. I went to Chicago. Just two years. <laughs> going everywhere. What I did is I just used every opportunity that is coming on my way. Because my goal or my vision is to reach out, learn while I'm here. I think Paul did the same thing in order to pursue his vision. So I'd like to show you some slides here. And before that, I'd like to tell you one thing. Reaching the vision is absolutely in our hands. So think outside of your box. And I remember the good words said by our President Dennis Jones. Think big. See big. Do big. Think big. And I remember saying, he's saying this, think big, see big, do big. And he says, and I heard Brother James Gillen telling me a few minutes ago, he said, your future is there. That means he's in front of you. Our future is in front of us. It's not in our back. So we don't have to look back. We have to look straight ahead. Look at our vision. And do all we can to pursue it. So I'm going to show you a few slides, what kind of vision I have and how, what kind of efforts I put in to reach. It's not to pack my back, I'm trying to help you out. There are ways you can reach people. There are ways you can fulfill your vision. There are ways you can, your mission can be accomplished. Because not having a vision is someone who do not have a direction and he's like in the, out in the nowhere in the ocean, <clears throat> if you don't have a vision. So I'd like to share some of them with you. And this is, in order to reach my vision, I'm going to share that vision next, but to reach my vision, this is my foundation. I work with young people, starting a youth class in our local congregation. Then we got out on vacation Bible school every summer. And we had a youth rally program every year. So we, I, went, uh, I started my full-time ministry in 2007, January. So in the last five years, this is the kind of foundation what we laid. And also the future <coughs> religious training camp and the young woman workshop, what we are working on. This is the foundation. So in order to have a, a set goal or in order to have accomplish a set vision, you have to have a firm foundation. And this is Dr. Dennis Jones, the president, when he was there. We inaugurated this program called Future Preachers Training Camp. I'm a third generation Christian in India, and we're working for the fourth generation. So, I'm going to tell you in a minute what my vision is, but this is how. And these are the young children, or the teenagers, that attended this Future Preachers Training Program. They were there for one week. And also, and these are the number of children or the young people attended for the youth camp or the youth rally, what we call, now we're going to call it, from next year it will be Challenge Youth Conference. So this is all working with young people, laying the foundation. I don't know you understand, uh, uh, I hope you understand. I was listening to the, uh, I don't remember his name, John Maxwell, I think who does the leadership seminars, he said, uh, planting a seed 
or he said the seed designates a harvest. So I turn it this way. Working with the young people is planting the seed and the seed definitely designates the harvest. So this is what we are working on. And this will work with the vacation Bible school every summer. So that's the foundation. The next step is working with the preacher training schools. Training more effective, like you've been trained here. So we give it intense training for the men for two years to become evangelists now in our country. So with the education what I gathered here, what I learned here, what I had here, and with other very educated men in India, we are working or striving to do this. And we have two Bible schools I'm working with where we train preachers. And one of them is uh, an extension school of uh, Bay Valley Bible Institute of Denver. So we're so happy. We've been working with them for the last three years. And the other school, Skinner's Garden Bible School, we've been working with that for the last uh, 12 years. So two preacher training schools we are doing. So our approach is laying the foundation, build up on it, the preacher training school. And the next is, I mean, this is graduation ceremony of one of our school. And, um, and another school where we're working is talking about this Bay Valley Extension School. Is there, that we have 16 graduates there. Uh, we have the two year schooling. And this is the last step is the preacher seminar or leadership workshop. So that is the last stage. So youth preachers are preacher training and then working with the preachers to establish leadership.